Alright, hello everyone and welcome to AEW Discussion. I'm your host and AEW enthusiast Dougie Doug. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing Dynamite December 13, 2023 edition, the Winter is Coming edition of Dynamite. And this uh, episode featured the uh, more action from the Gold League and the Continental Classic, as well as a match from the Blue League. And with that, we're going to get right into the action, starting with uh, Hangman Page versus Roderick Strong and a good competitive physical and physical match uh, concluded with Page overcoming an interference and flattening his opponent with a dead eye for the victory. The quality of the match was almost secondary to the fact that Page looked like a world beater, especially in the kingdom and strong uh, en route to a win. Sure, a win helps uh, Page rebuild momentum as the year comes to an end, but did it need to come at the expense of strong in the kingdom? Probably not. Um, and because of that, uh, win uh, there and because of that there's a cred there's a credibility issue with this trio uh, when you consider their role in the storyline with MJF and Adam Cole and the fact that uh, Roderick Strong has been linked to the uh, the devil um, storyline as well that's problematic too so yeah it's an interesting uh, interesting choice here but at the very least uh, Strong is out of the wheelchair so take a win take uh, take a win there. Continental Classic Blue League match, Andrade El Idolo vs. Brody King. And Andrade would defeat Brody King to earn three crucial points in the Continental Classic Blue League. Wednesday night, and what was a battle between two driven, determined, and determined competitors. Both men beat each other up, dealing hard blows around about the body of the other, testing their toughness and endurance. Ultimately, it was uh, El Idolo's cunning that proved the difference as he exposed the turnbuckle and drove King's face into it before delivering a hammerlock DDT for the win. Uh, the win continued El Idolo's recent string of successes, which included went over Brian Danielson and, um, and gave uh, Brody King an out for the loss, all while delivering one of the better matches of the tournament to this point. So it is a shame to see Brody King lose a match. I kind of been, I've been enjoying watching him compete and win in the uh, uh, Continental Classic. It's kind of been a pleasant surprise, I think. He was somebody who was going to pick up as many points as he did, but I also like to see Andrade kind of getting some... Uh, uh, getting some wins here and stacking up some points. Nice to see him emerging as a favorite to uh, and also just be the leader in points. Uh, Continental Classic Gold lead Mark Briscoe versus Jay White and Switchblade fought hard to keep himself uh, mathematically alive in the Continental Classic uh, and because if he had lost it would be very difficult for him to remain in contention. Uh, luckily for White he was able to thwart a late, a late match surge uh, by Briscoe getting his knees up during an attempted froggy bow and put him away with the Blade Runner for the win. A good match that could have meant more if Briscoe was still meaningfully involved in the tournament, but because he's mathematically eliminated, it was practically a giveaway that J.O.I. was going to win. He did, um, I can't remember, J. I think J.O.I. J. is still, it was either J.O.I. or Roosh that got eliminated in this episode. I think it was Roosh. J.O.I. is still hanging on, but I would expect him to get eliminated, uh, probably next week. Uh, John Moxley versus Sheriff Strickland to close out the show, and Moxley got uh, stole the win here, grabbing a hold of Strickland's belt to score a controversial pin, making matters worse. Was Strickland shoulder was also off the mat. Uh, I'll give credit to the commentary team trying to sell that the referee's out of position, but regardless, it's still a bad look. The conclusion of a hotly anticipated bout accomplished two things: one, gives Moxley a lead in the Gold League, and two, sets up a next must-win situation for Strickland the next week. Uh, and you know, in, 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 how do I phrase this? So Strickland, <laughs> you know, I'll be honest. I was kind of surprised that Strickland lost here. I thought he would have won, uh, considering all the momentum he had going for him. But uh, he's still, uh, still alive in this tournament, and you know, he was a guy. And you know, get, gotta give this guy credit. Uh, he's fighting through a bad shorter. He had Moxley reeling, and unfortunately, he lost via screwy means. He was, but he was every as he was every bit as good as the former world champion. Uh, it also, and also the way Moxley won does draw draw up some controversy and gives a reason for the two to run it back again in the semifinals if that is a direction Tony Khan plans on taking things. The match was not as good as the other matches. Uh, and the kind of the classic on dynamite, but it was a nice appetizer for what these two can do without strict TV time limits. 
Uh, so in conclusion, the continental classic once again dominated the airwaves, and anytime that is the case, as long as the in-ring content is strong, the show is going to be good. With that said, there continue to be questionable booking decisions, including the uh, usage of Mark Bri Briscoe and Jay Lethal, who and really had no business being in this tournament, especially given how they've been booked. Uh, add to that, Rio suddenly re-emerged, emergence, and apparently uh, status is top contender to the uh, AEW Women's title, which makes no sense. Uh, and also, it's just lazy as well. I mean, you can tell me you couldn't find anybody else. Why is this always a thing too with the AEW Women's World Championship? Why? Why is it so hard for Tony Khan to build up new challengers and have people and give out title opportunities to women who aren't former champions? Uh, then you also have a bad promo segment from Omega, Jericho, Starks, and Big Bill, and you have a show with just enough head scratching decisions to keep it from. Uh, achieving greatness. Also, AEW had an opportunity to capitalize on the publicity of the Von Eric family, uh, their movie The Iron Claws, releasing on December 22nd, and instead they booked Kevin and his sons, Ross and Marshall, on the backstage when he had to set up a match on Rampage. That was it. That was that was all they could do with the Von Erics. Uh, man, what a, what a what a waste. What a major missed opportunity right there. And also, kind of, you just look very disrespectful, treating them like an afterthought. But uh, yeah, with that, we'll go and wrap up this episode of AW Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button down below.